have a seat. Yeah. All right. Hey, everybody. There was a body sent in from Central Hospital, which was of particular interest. The man was under quarantine with an unknown illness and died approximately two days after being admitted. Uh, the hospital post-mortem analysis shows that uh, the cause of death is organ failure. Why is that relevant to us? Well, the man's name was Georgi Markov, a Bulgarian dissident under protection of the state. I will initiate an investigation through NEPD. Michelle, could you please begin interviews with hospital staff, family members, and any other information we can get from the police? Yeah. Carrie? Any indication of the potential causes of organ failure? Anything that will tell us where to start looking? Well, based on the symptoms described by the nurses at Central Hospital, I believe we're looking for an exotic substance. I will know more once I have a determined type of organ failure. So what are our leads? I've interviewed the hospital staff involved. They said the man came in with fever and swelling in the leg. There was a small wound in the center of the swelling around the fibula, which was treated for an infection. The wife who admitted him to the hospital said he was complaining about numbness in the leg after a physical encounter with a man at a bus stop whose umbrella jabbed him in the leg. She has been pressuring hospital staff and police to launch an investigation under the pretense that the KGB has made previous assassination attempts to silence Mr. Markov's voice regarding communist practices. During the autopsy, I found a small stainless steel ball lodged approximately two inches inside the wound, uh, which the victim was referring to in the hospital. The post-mortem analysis shows severe necrosis of the upper leg muscles as well as the femoral vein and sciatic nervous tissue. Uh, the swollen lymph glands in the upper thigh indicate a toxic response. Tissue degeneration occurred on all major organs except for the brain, indicating the substance was distributed internally via the circulatory system and was transferable between pulmonary and systemic circulation, showing no elimination of the substance through uh, metabolic processes. The toxicological analysis showed an organic protein was found in the degenerated tissues. Its chemical structure is quite complex, which is commonly known as ricin. What do we know about rice? I did some research and found that entry can occur through any size lesion, as this gives direct access to the bloodstream. The protein itself currently has no common usage, however, it is being investigated as a potential cancer medication. Occasionally, people have been known to ingest the beans, both intentionally and mistakenly, and there have also been several cases of deliberate exposure, such as murder attempts and anticipated terrorist attacks. Rice can be produced in pellet, powder, or mist form, Water soluble, so it can be easily introduced into a water supply. Uptake of ricin can occur through dust or mist. This method of exposure is also dependent on the size of the inhaled particle. There is essentially no toxicity following inhalation of five micrometer diameter ricin particles when deposition occurs in the thoracic region, but is 100% lethal among mice, inhaling a similar dose of one micrometer diameter particle deposited in the pulmonary region. Ricin consists of two bonded chains, a nonpolar RTA chain and a polar RTB chain. The carbohydrate structure attached to the RTB chain allows for the ricin to attach to the cell wall. The B chain is effectively the carrier that binds the toxin to the cell wall, where it is engulfed into the cell through endocytosis. After the protein enters the cytosol, it is carried to the endoplasmic reticulum, where the chains can be broken by naturally existing proteins within the cell, making the RTA chain an active ribosome inactivating protein. 
Ricin is distributed primarily through the vascular system or the gastrointestinal tract. It affects all areas of the body with emphasis on those organs and tissues directly related to the means of distribution. The cells which make up these organs and tissues cannot produce proteins for cellular activity and reconstruction, thus the cell undergoes necrosis causing swelling, pain, and potential loss of function in organs. Once the active chain bonds with a ribosomal protein, degradation of the structure results in the inability of the ribosome to carry out protein synthesis. After the RTA chain has bonded to the ribosome, it usually does not leave the cell. Okay then, so the cause of death has been determined as toxic response to contact with ricin. Now we need to determine how this man came into contact with a substance that potent. Well, the police report said witnesses saw a man bump into Markov and drop a black umbrella on the ground. He was wearing a black coat and hat, but no witnesses saw his face. The man then ran to a nearby car right after the encounter. We do not have any leads as to who the unknown man or the driver of the car could be. Police are asking for anyone with information to come forward, and we are searching for records of where the ricin might have come from. So what do we know about the murder weapon? The stainless steel ball pulled on Markov's leg was found to have two holes bored into it, and we believe that the filled with ricin was later dissolved and was absorbed into Markov's body. Ricin is classified as a neurotoxin and can be lethal at 0.4 micrograms per kilogram, and this is extremely low TDI on a monotonic dose response curve. And it shows immediate toxicity, indicating a very discreet, no observable adverse effect and limit. And death will usually occur within 36 to 72 hours. The protein is a derivative of castor beans from the industrial manufacturing of castor oil and not readily available to the general public. Because ricin is difficult to detach from the bonding ribosome, excretion is not a big factor. Essentially, once ricin is bonded to the cell structures, it destroys the cell and would be removed through typical biological processes to remove internal damaged tissues. So how did ricin get into a system? It's possible that the umbrella contained a compressed chamber as a, as a delivery system for the poison. Markov would have hardly felt the pellet go in. Okay, did the victim have any other factors contributing to his death? There are no known physiological factors contributing to the toxicity of ricin as of yet, besides body mass, uh, but a health risk occurs at all levels of exposure. Uh, gene mapping studies are starting to reveal pathways of ricin susceptibility. Main factors affecting ricin toxicity is the route of exposure along with the dose. Skin or eye exposure may cause pain, inflammation, and is the least harmful path. Ingestion can cause uh, toxic responses such as intestinal pains, vomiting, death, and dehydration or organ failure. Inhalation can cause nausea, fever, coughing, difficulty breathing, or death from low blood, blood pressure and respiratory failure. Injection, which is the most lethal, uh, can may cause deterioration of muscle and nervous tissue near the injection site, which could lead to organ failure or death. So what else do we know about ricin? Should the public health department be notified? This appears to be a one-time targeted attack, so the risk to the general public is small. Because of the severe toxicity of ricin, carcinogenicity is not a factor because cell death would usually occur before there's any cancer risk. Because of the availability of ricin, the biggest potential health risk is deliberate poisoning. It is an ideal bioweapon for small targets. However, use as a weapon is unlikely as mass production of ricin would be difficult and expensive. So is there any antidote out there that could have saved this man? Although many antagonists have been tried, no antidote as yet has been found, but pH can affect toxicity. One study finding ricin was most toxic at neutral to slightly alkaline pH and strongly reduced at a pH below 6. Ricin can also be inactivated by heat. Based on the low excretion percentage of ricin, I was able to estimate the dosage and concentration of ricin within the cell's tissues also determined that the substance is highly refined. So what does that mean to us? 
This means the protein did not come from generic production. It also means it was synthesized in a manner intended to cause quick and certain death. I'm certain that this man was murdered. 